With this recording, we're going to look at shapes a little bit more, and we're going to look at refinements such as editing a created shape and uh, editing a gradient. Right now, we have an open project, but no composition. So I'm going to start by right-clicking in the project window, and I am going to create a new composition. This is going to be about shapes, so I'm going to call it shapes. Uh, editing and gradients. I'm going to make it 1280 by 720, which is 720p. And again, double check the pixel aspect ratio, square pixels, exactly what we want, and frame rate. Uh, the length of time my composition is going to last is going to be 10 seconds, so that's perfect. I click OK, and now I have my composition. I'm going to start by creating a new shape layer, and I'm just going to create a basic shape on it. Uh, here, let's start with a circle or an ellipse, which is what it's actually called in the tool palette here. So right now, I have a basic circle shape. I'm just going to turn on my title action safe area so I can use that to help me position my shape. And again, uh, you can turn on rulers, command R is the key command to bring that up. And you can also drag guides out if what you want to do is set up guidelines for laying out your composition. Now, any kind of changes you want to make to a shape, there are a couple of places you can do that. Uh, one thing you can do is you can change the fill by holding down the Option key or the Alt key on a PC and just click repeatedly on the fill and that allows you to go from a basic color, a linear gradient, a uh, radial gradient to no fill at all. I think it might be interesting to use a uh, radial gradient here but to keep it simple I'm going to go with a linear gradient. You can also change the stroke here in exactly the same way. Hold down the Option key or the Alt key on a PC. Click here and you go from having a 25 pixel stroke. Again, uh, click here and enter a new value if you want to have a smaller or larger stroke. Uh, if I want to change the color, just double click on it. And now I have a blue stroke or outline. And again, uh, I can switch to a stroke, which is a gradient either linear or radial or no stroke at all. Let's go with just the basic blue, just to kind of set it out as something a little bit different. Now what I want to point out is that when this was created, if we look down at the layers palette, you can see it was created on shape layer one as ellipse one. So really there are two different places you can select it. And this matters for a number of reasons. You can animate things separately if the shape is selected. and of the layers selected. In some ways, it's similar to the different ways you can animate type versus uh, animating a layer as a whole, only you have fewer options in terms of a shape. Now, what I want to point out is uh, shape layer one. I'm going to call this circle, and I am just going to change that name by selecting it, hitting the return key, and typing in circle. And here, I can also change the name here. So again, select it, hit the return key, and I am going to call this gradient circle. And now, one of the reasons why I did that is because uh, we have one shape layer called circle, and right now we have one shape on it. But if I were to go in and say select the polygon tool and click and drag, what I'm going to get is a second shape on my circle layer. So I'm just going to rename this to reflect that. I'm going to call it uh, circle ampersand star. And poly star one, I'm just going to, I'm only going to have, well, actually, I didn't draw a star, did I? I drew a polygon. So let's just change that to circle and polygon. 
Okay, so I have my polygon here. Right now it looks uh, exactly like my circle in terms of the gradient fill and the stroke. But if we look over here in the layers palette and just drop it down, you can see I can go in and make changes to it. So here, if I drop down the stroke, for example, and change the color, let's make it pink, then it only changes it for my polygon. And let's say uh, what I want to do is, uh, so I've changed the stroke. I can also go in and change things like the stroke width. And if I scroll down a little bit more, I could also set, uh, say for example, dashes. So here I've added uh, 10 dashes and I'm gonna add a little bit of an offset. I could animate this and that might actually be a little bit interesting. So let's do a one second animation where the uh, dash numbers change. So we get uh, larger and larger dashes till they completely give us an outline. So now if we were to just scrub the playback head, you can see what that looks like. Almost looks like it's being drawn. And actually maybe I will start it with even more So we'll start it with, actually let's start it with one. And that kind of gives us an interesting effect. Uh, well maybe one is too few. Um, or maybe we'll start it with two. Okay. Now that gives us kind of an interesting effect and then we can preview the animation just by scrubbing the playback head. Now if I want to preview the animation at real time, again, we have to do a RAM preview. And for those of you working in After Effects uh, 2015, a RAM preview is pretty automatic. You just play it and you have it. Now here I'm just going to uh, generate a RAM preview by clicking this button. You can also go under uh, Composition, Preview, RAM Preview, and that will do it as well. And uh, again, let's just watch this so we can see what the animation looks like. Now this is taking a long time to run through because we're previewing the entire 10 seconds. We could actually preview a much shorter area of the composition by setting our work area to be much shorter. And then that way when we generate a RAM preview, now we're only uh, generating it for the first three seconds. So that's something you can change back and forth all the time. Uh, now here I've got my uh, I've got my stroke animated. Let me just go in and have a look at the fill. So gradient fill. Actually here for this, let me just go in. Let me just select my shape. Now here I want to point out that when my shape is selected, uh, it allows me to, um, I can see the anchor point, which is uh, in this case, it's actually in the center. But I also get this, which allows me to go in and edit my gradient. So if I want to change how it looks and in terms of how smoothly it runs across and how gradual, I can just go in and click that. I can also change it here. So for example, um, I want to change my color to something else. I can do that very easily here. I'm not saying this is going to be pretty, but it will be different. Select the second color stop, and again, I can go in and make that change. Now here, this uh, specifies the color midpoint. That's part of what you're editing when you're dragging that little line in the gradient itself. But I also want to point out that by clicking anywhere along this, you can go in and set an additional color stop. So you could have a rainbow. Really, you can have as many different color stops as you want. Though I'm going to say uh, too many and it starts to look a little bit busy. So again here you can go in make these adjustments to the points between color. So I'm going to have like a stripey effect over in this corner and then have it kind of gradually move to the magenta. Okay, so there's no reason to do that. I just wanted to show you how you could go in and edit a gradient. And actually, while we're here, 
let's look at the circle. And again, clicking directly on the circle or clicking on gradient circle over here allows us to go in and edit the gradient in a more direct way. And here, rather than um, go in and change the color, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it to a radial gradient. And rather than going from a color to another color, I'm still going to do that. But what I'm really going to set, set this one to white. And what I want to really change is the opacity. So I'm going to have it go from full opacity to about 10%, which when it's against a black background makes it look like it's going from white to black. But if we have something underneath it, it will look like it's going from white to transparent. Okay. So here, now we have that property done. If we wanted to, uh, you know, go in and edit that gradient, we can. Uh, again, it's a matter of putting your playback head at the point where you want it. And I'm just going to set a start point for my gradient. And then at one second, I'm going to add an additional keyframe. And I'm going to change that start point. So it's going to go from one side to the other. And actually, let's just change that. So let's undo that last bit. So it starts like that and then goes over here. And uh, I could also edit the, the end point as well. Let's do that. And so now I have an edit where it starts like this and then essentially just moves over to the other side. It's a little bit different, but you get the picture. Okay, so click directly on a shape with the selection tool if you need to change the fill, the stroke, or edit the gradient. Now, if you need to change a shape itself, you know, alter the shape, then what you're actually uh, working with is the path. And here, um, let's just have a look. We have the gradient circle. We have ellipse path one. And with polystar path, with the polygon, we have polystar path one. Now, what we're going to look at is editing um, you know, the shape of a shape. And I just want to point out, if you drop down the polystar path one, for example, we can go in and we can change the number of points. So we could animate this as a property. We already have the stroke animated. Let's say what we want to do is start with three points, which is the minimum we can with a, with a shape. And then we want to have a two second animation where we increase the number of points until it essentially becomes a circle. So that's what we have. Okay, now this could actually probably be a lot closer together. Let's make it uh, a one second animation instead. Okay, now um, very, very straightforward, very simple. Now, uh, Again, uh, this is something we can edit here. We could also go in and change things like the position. Again, these are all um, things that you can animate for individual options. So uh, we could say go in and adjust the outer radius. Let's go in and, and just add another keyframe for that and make it a little bit larger. So that's going to affect our stroke animation the most. And let's, uh, we've got that gradient inside, so let's also do rotation. Again, we'll go back to frame one, rotation, and we will just make that a one second animation as well. Okay, now you'll notice the, um, our shape is rotating. Hard to see because so much is going on here, but our gradient isn't. And uh, one thing that's interesting about this, if we want to go in and animate our gradient, we have to animate it uh, in the gradient fill one option. So again, here we can go in and 
just to add a keyframe at the beginning. Add a, another keyframe. And let's just have it grow. And let's also, let's add, edit the colors as well. Let's have a keyframe here. Maybe we'll have one where the first animation starts. And we will cycle through the colors at two seconds. Go to edit gradient. Let's uh, actually, let's just get rid of these and let's change this one to something completely different. Okay, so we'll make it white and this one we will make yellow. So let's see how that looks. Okay, so a little bit different in terms of the animation. And again, these are all things we can adjust. So here, uh, we have two separate animations going on. What I want to point out is that, um, you know, they are essentially, they're happening to two shapes that are uh, on the same layer. And this is okay if you don't want them to move around or do anything like that or do anything complicated. But if you need to do more complicated animation, I want to point out that the anchor point is in the center of the layer. And if you're moving it to one shape or the, the other, then uh, you're kind of optimizing it for that layer. So if we were to do a rotation here, oh, uh, let's make sure we're on the right layer first. Then, uh, and again, let's make sure we're on the right layer. I'm just going to lock that uh, background gradient. So here, if we have this, it's going to uh, rotate around that center. Great if we wanted to do something like a solar system. And if we want to move that uh, anchor point somewhere else, say we want everything to rotate around the sphere, the circle, uh, we can still move that, but bear in mind that we're moving it for both the triangle and the circle now. So if we want them to animate separately, they have to be on separate layers. Uh, that is if we want to animate things like uh, that require the shifting of an anchor point. So things like rota rotation, some positions, mainly rotation, 